Hello. So today's two minute mastering tip might seem like a bit of a tangent from my theme this week, which is don't try and master while you're mixing. But tomorrow I'll show you how it fits back in and relates to that topic. So the tip is very simple. Some people might say it should have been the first tip in this whole series, uh, and it is to not try and master your own music. Now, I realize that if you're watching uh, a series of Facebook videos about uh, two minute mastering tips, chances are you're not gonna take my advice on that. You don't want to, and I understand that. I'm a mastering engineer, I, I love it. It's why I do what I do. So of course I understand the, the fascination and, and why you would wanna get better at being able to do uh, this thing. But even so, it's very, very hard to master your own music. And the reason is objectivity. If you recorded, mixed, maybe even if you're the artist for the material that you're working on, you know too much. There are too many stories in your head about why the kick drum sounds slightly boomy, why the guitars are panned hard left, why the vocal is a little bit sibilant, all the rest of it. You know the struggles you went through, the pain that you had to, to get it sounding as good as it does at this stage. And the risk is that you use those as excuses not to address them when you come to the mastering stage. Uh, a professional mastering engineer, a third party, would come in and go, well, the kick drum's a bit boomy, we need to do this. Or that guitar's too far out, we need to do this. Or we need to address that sibilance. Where you might hold off of those things, they'll just get straight in to the, to the nub of the matter. Another challenge is the space that you work in. Chance, uh, very few people have the luxury of a dedicated mastering space, so the chances are that you're working, doing the mastering in the same space that you recorded and mixed in. So any issues there might be with the acoustics in that room, A, they're embedded in the recording in the first place, and B, you're not gonna hear them when you come to the mastering stage. If there's a, a bit of a 70 hertz boom in the room, so you haven't got quite enough 70 hertz, you're not going to notice when you get to mastering that you don't have quite enough 70 hertz because the room is still going to hide that fact from you by adding that little boost itself. So those are just two reasons why it's very difficult to be objective about mastering your own music. So that's a great piece of advice just in general. It's, it's a great reason to go to another mastering engineer. We'll, I'll leave the point there for the time being and tomorrow I'll come back and explain how that relates to the theme of not trying to master while you're mixing. I hope that was useful and interesting for you. Uh, if you'd like more of these tips, there's a link to a YouTube playlist of all of them so far uh, in the post along with this video. Um, like the Production Advice Facebook page and sign up for notifications so you're told when there are going to be new tips put out. Um, and head over to productionadvice.co.uk where I post a lot of other YouTube videos and blog posts on recording, mixing and mastering. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.